Welcome, Sagittarius. This is G. You're watching all astrology. Your December. We are going to go through the astrology of December for you, and then we're gonna pull you a card for three events that I'm going to talk about. And in December, we have one ending, two new beginnings. So let's jump right into this. Your first event happens in the first week of December, around December 7th, give or take a couple of days. It is a closure, a completion, an ending, something you're finishing up on, something you've you've reached the conclusion. You've, you're, you've gotten to the last chapter of the book and you finally completed it, right? So it's a it's something that you feel as though I'm done with that. And possibly you're letting it go. Say you've got this really good book you've read and, you know, you got it all done and you're finally like, well, it was a good book, but it's time to, you know, pass it on. Give it to somebody else. Now, that's just a short example, quick example, right? So Sagittarius, what does this mean for you? Exactly what does this mean? Well, if it's a release and a completion an ending, a closure, right? You've got to the last chapter and you're all done. What are you completing? Well, it's a full moon energy and it's in Gemini energy. So if it's in Gemini, that's in your seventh house, Sag. Yes. That means this is significant one-on-one relationships. So are you with somebody? Are you hoping to be with somebody? Are you married? Is there a business partnership somewhere? somehow involved in this. Because you, there's Gemini in the seventh, seventh is significant partnerships. This can also include business partnerships. Yep, this can be business partnerships. If we think of Gemini energy, it's talking, it's communicating, it's sharing information. So seventh house, significant one-on-one -on -one relationships. Do you have relationships with folks that you've never met? Right, that sounds bizarre. Not really. Gemini is social networks, right? So go to these dating sites, right? Or possibly you communicate with people through email. You know, think about it. you're on your phone, you're texting people. These could be coworkers. They could be people you consider friends. They could be peers, somebody you're in school with, maybe online learning. That's a really good possibility. But it can also be business partnerships, so think about that, business partnerships, whether you own the company or work for a company, do you have partnerships that you've paired up with with other companies that your parent company kind of sort of deals with, right? Because in a way, these can be those business partnerships. So there could be something that's ending, something where you're finished. Now, this can also take on a very personal tone for those of you who have something at the degrees of 16 degrees. Right, it's 16 degrees in Gemini energy. So if you're playing along at home, if you've got your own chart, you're gonna do uh, one of two things. You're gonna find Gemini energy in your chart and you're gonna see it should be in your seventh house. And then the next thing you're gonna do, which is really, really important, is look for the degrees, 16 degrees, and see, is this actually in my seventh, right? Some of you might say, hey, gee, I have something a little bit down below and it's actually in my sixth. And if it is, comment to me so I can tell you what to do from there and how to help you out, okay? So we're looking really for the degrees. We're going to do a two-degree orb, right? So that would be 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 degrees of Gemini. A completion, a closure, an ending, a release of some sort. So it could simply be a release in the way that you think about something, meaning, you know, you think about Gemini energy, right? Gemini is like that duality, okay? It says one thing and then it says something else where it seems like it's a contradiction, right? It's that, yeah, strong duality. It's got the ability to see a lot of different perspectives, whether it's of a scenario or it says things that, you know, when they say it and then five minutes later they say something else and it's just like, but you just said that. And so it seems like, yeah, it just doesn't make sense. They have the ability to just, you know, I think of the owl and that rotating head right? It seems like it spins 360. And so if, if something has that perspective, it can talk about something from all angles, which is what Gemini likes to do. It likes to debate. So here's some keywords, all right? Think of your seventh house, significant relationships. Um, 
and and business partnerships. So these, of course, people were dating, people were married to, but could even simply just be friends that were close to, right? People were willing to compromise for in some way because we value that relationship. Uh, so we've got teaching and sales, right? The way I think, the way I share information, learning, learning a new skill. Interesting, right? We talked about business. Uh, coworkers, classmates, even uh, the dual perspective. We talked about that. News, social media. Do you feel as though you're that person who um, likes to deliver information? Do you want to be the one who, I don't know if I should say first, but you definitely enjoy sharing information, exchanging thoughts and ideas, possibly debating, possibly. Okay. Either way, something is releasing, something is ending. Could it be a partnership? Sure. It could be. It could be a simple thing like we no longer do business with that company anymore. It could be that simple. Uh, we think about Gemini energy. It's also our local community. So it's, yeah, literally where you live, the businesses, the retail market, you know, the shops that you go to. What if, what if you have, what if you're like a person who likes to shop for fun or who does lots of, um, maybe you do like uh, farmer's markets. Maybe you do farmer's markets, literally, like maybe you make things and you sell them there. That would be like a partnership with the community. That would be this too. Okay. So it's coming upon winter in my neck of the woods and a lot of other areas we get colder at this time of year. So there might be some of that, that it's just naturally ending. It's just the season, right? It's just the ending of a cycle. And in essence, that's all a full moon is. It's something we've been working towards. It's something that's been building and then it reaches a peak and then it releases and let goes and it ends. Okay. So let's get you a card so we can get you a little bit more details on what this could be. And um, yeah, seventh house doesn't always have to be a relationship that's that that's ending right it could simply be something simple about the relationship like the way you think about partners yeah like hmm if i have a partner they have to look like this or they have to be like this or they have to be a certain age or a certain you know like that's all part of this so are you possibly releasing like your list of your check marks of what your partner should be like, right? What you envision for your partnership. Could be some of that in there. Let's mix this up and find out. Get more details on this. I know our minds are changing a lot. Um, and Gemini appearing to be scattered, right? Appearing to be contrarian. I think having Mars in Gemini, which we still do until March, I think there's a lot of that that's changing. So we might be able to obtain more laser-like focus in areas of our lives where we seemed a little bit more of um, wishy-washy about, right? Where we were just had our foot in 17 different buckets, if that's possible, <laughs> right? You only got two feet. But there's something about options and choices, wanting choices, that's big for Gemini energy. Not wanting to be, um, there should be like flexibility involved. Flexibility. And absolutely, people have to be able to talk and communicate about what they're thinking or feeling. Be important for you for a partner. And I know quite a few said just going through some stuff. So just, yeah, when we think of Gemini energy and Mars there, yeah, it's a big time where we're seeing a lot of mental health issues. Not that they weren't there before, but they seem more pronounced because Mars is there. And again, it's not that they didn't exist. It's just that they are, we're seeing it. We're seeing something we didn't see before. Remember? Perspective. So I've been mixing and I'm hearing to just grab this card right off the top for you. <clears throat> if I can grab the card. There we go. And are you ready? This is a card where it's Leo, which is children, enjoyed laughter, having a good time, fun, which would be the jester. See the jester up there? So yeah, the jester is the joker, right? Likes to have a good time, always making fun, supposed to be the entertainer. And then there's the king laying on the ground. Yeah, the king is like laying there, knocked off the throne. It looks as though the jester, jester showed the king a mirror and the mirror kind of got 
Well, kind of got a surprise, kind of got knocked down, right? Something about uh, the Leo energy, because <clears throat> that's the kingly energy too, believe it or not. Uh, and then freedom, freedom of expression, creative forms of expressing, friendship. See the Aquarius energy, that's a friendship card or a friendship symbol, I should say. It's group energy, but it's also someone who is in charge. It's a lot like the kingly energy, somebody who is in charge, authority figures. And so what happens with authority figures when they feel as though like they're untouchable and they're above the law or they can't, you know, you, they can do no wrong, big ego energy. They're usually very courageous and they'll do and say things most wouldn't do or say. Uh, this card is also saying to remember not to take ourselves too seriously, to be a little bit more lighthearted. But this would this would scream masculine energy, by the way, masculine energy. So masculine energy with somebody who once held authority over you, over you or who felt like they had, I don't want to say like they had power over you, but what does a king do? A king rules. Yeah. Maybe you were this individual in this card. That's possible. Whenever energy is shown or talked about, it can be energy that is coming from you or somebody in your life that is presenting that type of energy or even um, like an experience. There's freedom associated with this, okay? See the bird in the air and flight? Freedom. Flight gives freedom. The ability to take off and to just go, right? See Mars at the bottom there and then the sun across from that Mars is the actions, being able to take action, enjoying that freedom, but at the same time needing balance and fun and laughter. That's why the jester is there, to show the king, lighten up, dude. Take a look at yourself. Now, we're going to talk about the new beginning. There's actually two of them coming, okay? So we have Jupiter entering into Aries energy. Now, you experienced this before. Um, it was all throughout the summer, pretty much. We had Jupiter and Aries. Um, yeah, th all throughout the summer. And then it, it went and did retrograde and went back into Pisces. And so it's in Pisces right now at the time of this recording, which is in November. However, once December comes around, Jupiter goes back into Aries energy again. Now what this will do is it will increase our assertions. It will increase our, our, our want and our desire, our passion, I should say, to be free and to be an independent human, right? In other words, we may be very irritable and less patient, less understanding, because Pisces was understanding. So having Jupiter and Pisces, we were able to probably see the big picture and the connect of the dots, right? But then it goes into Aries and it becomes all about me, me, me. So for you, for you, Sag, this is happening in your fifth house. Okay. So fifth house would be children and romance and joy and creativity. Yeah. Fifth house energy, Sag. All about being creative. So this would mean you are going to be very assertive as far as being creative. You're going to go forward and just take action. There's not going to be the hesitation. So you might want, you know, just keep in mind when we're trying to, um, when we're in that Aryan energy, we have to be aware of our ego because everything becomes all about ourselves. And if there's an individual or an event that seems to slow us down or get in our way or prevent us from moving as fast as we want to move, we get mad, we get pissed. And so keep all these things in mind. So this may be a lack of patience for children, right? Maybe you had some patience, but might be where it might, might not seem as patient, right? It can be a beautiful energy though, because Jupiter brings, usually brings good and benefit. But when it gets into Aries energy, usually what happens is we act before we think, right? Or we speak before we think. Um, but being in, in that fifth house of fun, it's going to really uh, boost your physical ability to, to, to just like have fun, to go out, to explore, to have adventures, right? And to do things that make you feel free. Think of that, your independent freedom actions of your body. Again, this is romance, right? So dating, 
relating, mating, right, which is then how we get children (laughs) and joy, right? So think about, do I want children? Think about Jupiter being there and um, just, you know, just think before you act, you know? And so it could be really beneficial and it could feel like an increase of joy and laughter for you. Let's pull you a card. They're telling me to just shuffle them like this and then split the deck. So this is what I will do. Give you a quick shuffle. Okay, now they're saying split the deck, which they said already. So I'm trying to do this in a way where you guys can see it. Split the deck right there. Oh, that one didn't want to get away, so we'll take it. Okay, are you ready? So this is your new beginning. Uh, and it's your Jupiter and your Aries energy, actions of my body, freedom. Uh, this is saying very domestic, but it is a significant one-on-one relationships because it has Libra up there. What I'm seeing is if this is domestic and it was in your fifth house, there's something here where it's relationships that could possibly become domestic relationships. So whether that means like a roommate or whether it means a significant other, like in taking somebody on that they could share it can, in the housing, like cleaning, cooking, washing, right? Chores, guys chopping wood over there, the woman's doing all the laundry. Like this is all domestic stuff. And it's not that thrilling. Nobody's ever that thrilled. Oh, I get to go do laundry today. No, but it's stuff that has to get done. And there's a uh, cooperation. See the Venus and the Mercury, they're like siblings and they understand what needs to be done. And so they work well together. They say, well, let's be fair. I do this chore and you do that chore. So there's something here. There's an ease that this energy brings. There's an ease in, in, in working together. There's an ease in partnerships, an ease in, could be business, but I don't think so because it's in the fifth house of fun and romance. So if it's romance, well, then this doesn't look very romantic, but that's kind of my point. It looks like it's taking on a more serious tone where it's routines and domestic tasks around the house gives understanding. And and you do these things so you can have peace, right? So we can function, but so that there's a sense of balance and peace in the home. And that's how the home functions. Good food, clean home, clothing, We can get our work done when we have all our necessities and our needs and our basics taken care of. Right. So I like this card because it brings ease. It brings ease. It brings understanding and the ability to compromise. All righty. We're going to put that back into the fold and talk about the last new beginning for the month of December for you. So this is, of course, the last month of 2022. We made it. Holy crap. We made it this far. And it's a new beginning. Yes, this is a new moon energy and it happens uh, December 23rd. Yeah, very close, right before Christmas Day. So it's, you know, that's kind of exciting and it's in Capricorn energy. So this would be goals and ambitions, professional goals, right? Something you want for a career or work. And it's all, the whole point of it is to is to somehow accomplish financial security, tangible. This is the placement of very tangible things. You know, it's something, there's nothing abstract about it. It's the material and the tangible. And these material and tangible things give you security, right? But you think about long-term security, not temporary security, long-term, right? So you're looking for a job where you're like, hmm, can I stay at, how long can I stay at this job? Can I, is there room to grow at this job? Right. It's job, it's responsibilities, it's rules, it's structure, professional structure, a vocation, right? So let's see where this happens in your life for you, Sag. This is happening, ooh, your second house of money and income. Ooh, new job. Cha-ching, Possibly. This is 132, one degrees, 32 minutes in Capricorn. It's a new moon and it's happening in your second house of values and money. So do you actually get a new job or do you just have a new professional goal or ambition because you've changed your values? So many of us have been really tweaking, really tweaking 
do I value that person anymore? You know, do I, are they part of my future? Do I, you know, what do I value for my future? What do I need? We've had to make choices about, uh, I need to, you know, release and let go and, and give things away. And so what am I taking with me? What and who am I taking with me? But in Capricorn, it's something very tangible. It's like, we're moving. I got to take this with me. This has got to come with me. I can't live without it, right? This is important. This will help me, right? Uh, I've had that forever, right? Like holding on to things that are old because it's Saturn energy, so it's time. It's a long period of time. And it's in your second house, which means don't give up, right? Yeah, it's steady wins the race. Not the hare, but the tortoise wins this race. Be diligent, be persistent, but just do it by piecemeal, right? You're not looking to elevate all of a sudden, you know, financially and have like this financial windfall through your job. No, it's steady wins the race by piecemeal. You know, you get a little bit of experience here, a little bit here, you know, and pretty soon you realize you're actually climbing the ladder, even though at times it might have seemed horizontal, right? Depending upon the skills that you picked up, it might have actually been a little bit more, I mean, it might have been diagonal, but it was actually, um, yeah, you were actually elevating. You were elevating the whole time. You just didn't, you know, it's hard to perceive it sometimes. So this could be a new job. It could be you just setting new goals for yourself, new material goals, right? But it's something tangible. So that would mean you're like, oh, well, my goal is I want to own this by such and such time. And it would be something that you could hold in your hand, basically. Right. And it doesn't always have to be something in your hand because it can be like, um, you know, uh, just think of, you know, tangible securities. A home is it can be a tangible security. You can't hold your home, but you can hold the deed to the home, right? Right. That's just a quick example. So now let's pull you a card and we'll see because this new beginning can be huge, uh, huge, really big for folks who have anything, you know, in the last degrees of Sag or um, the first two degrees in, in Capricorn, because zero degrees in Capricorn is the um, world access point, one of the world access points. So it's a big deal. It's, it's, it's like, it's Capricorns don't give up. That's what they're known for. And they're known for doing things that seem damn near impossible. Think of the goat climbing the mountainside. Like, look at the angle on that. How is that possible? Have you ever seen that? It's an, it's an amazing feat. And so that's this Capricorn energy. It's amazing. All righty. They said take the first card right off the top, and that's what I'm doing. This one is for you, Cappy, your new beginning, December 23rd. Um, but there's a stone, and you see how Saturn's on here? That's Capricorn's energy, and that's the new moon we're talking about. You see Aries on there? That's also um, similar energy to Capricorn energy. What it's saying is keep working. Keep working. You're, you're making way. And once you've put in the time, once you've done your due diligence, which isn't fast, okay? Capri Cap Saturn and Capricorn demand your time. There's no way to get around it. And that's what's your second house of income and money is. There's no shortcut. And that's perfect. You don't want to take a shortcut when you're dealing with Capricorn and Saturn energy. If you try to take a shortcut, what happens is you get thrown back down to step one again kind of think about Simon says when we when I see Saturn and Capricorn Saturn says okay you can go three steps or Simon says go three steps forward and then uh, didn't bother to say Simon says so what happens well you get pushed back to the to the start position again yeah so you got to follow the rules you got to follow the rules and time is one of the rules it means you can't cheat you can't elevate by suddenly being you know, walking on top of somebody and climbing the rungs on that ladder. You just got to do the work. There's no shortcut. Once you've put in the time, that sword will come right out. And that's the whole point of this. That sword only releases. It's not about brute strength. It's about integrity. Ethics and integrity are really important with Capricorn energy.
and to get that stone, get that sword out of that stone. That's what is demanded following the rules. So below the video, I'll have all the degrees for those of you who like to pay attention to the degrees in your chart. Again, if you don't know and you want to know, just comment below.